Hello and welcome to News Analytica. I'm Afumia Yalu and this is your news analysis for the day. Spoilers in the Ethiopian peace deal. The peace agreement reached between the TPLF and the Ethiopian federal government was acclaimed by many as monumental. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said, We welcome the momentous step taken in Pretoria today to advance the African Union's campaign to silence the guns. Blinken also commended the African Union for its efforts done to end the two-year-long war and bring peace in Ethiopia. Commissioner of the African Union Commission, Mosafaki Mohammed, also said that he warmly commends the parties for signing a secession of facilities agreement following talks facilitated by the AU panel. He also rendered the African Union's commitment to continue supporting the parties to find lasting peace and reconciliation for all Ethiopians. A statement by the European Union High Representative Joseph Borrell said the EU welcomes the announcement of the secession of facilities and congratulates both the government of Ethiopia and the Tigray People's Liberation Front for their commitment and courage towards peace. The statement called for a quick implementation of the agreement. Swift implementation of the agreement reached today is needed, he said. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, also urged all Ethiopians and the international community to support the bold step. Former Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, on her part, welcomed the news of the agreement to end hostilities in Ethiopia and hoped that this will be the first step towards sustainable peace, built on dialogue and political engagement. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed also issued an expression of gratitude on the conclusion of the peace talk statement in which he called the peace deal as monumental in moving Ethiopia forward on the path of the reforms we embarked upon four and a half years ago. Our commitment to peace remains steadfast and our commitment to collaborating for the implementation of the agreement is equally strong, Abiy promised. Nonetheless, some living abroad have started disowning the TPLF for accepting the only option to save thousands of lives. War proponents are also downplaying the peace agreement. The main point of contention is the disarmament clause in the agreement. The agreement signed by the two sides stresses that there will be only one national defense force in one nation and the TPLF's armed forces will lay down their arms and get rehabilitated to let her be reintegrated into their society. However, some Tigrayans are saying that the armed forces are the only security guarantee to the people of Tigray. Hence, as it is the TPLF, not the Tigrayan government, that signed the agreement, it won't get implemented. But this forgets the fact that the Tigrayan government had been dissolved by the federal government before the war started because the TPLF-led Tigray administration said it won't recognize the federal government as a legitimate government. These people who are denying recognition to the peace deal are also supported by foreigners who claim the peace deal is favoring the federal government than the TPLF or the people of Tigray. For instance, Alex de Waal, the head of the World Peace Foundation, wrote to the BBC that Tigray truce is a triumph for Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. He claims that the deal confirms broadly with the objectives of Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed when he launched what he called a law enforcement operation against the TPLF. Alex de Waal's opinion also claims that the deal provides for the Ethiopian government to establish a comprehensive national transitional justice policy, making no mention of any international investigations. This has an embedded connotation that the federal government is not trusted to conduct this without international verification, which is fallacious. Others, such as Martin Plot, have also tried to undermine the peace deal despite the deal's acceptance by the international community. Hence, anyone can see that the peace deal is seeing spoilers from the outset even before the first implementation meeting is held between the two sides. If the African Union wants to succeed in the implementation of this peace deal, it needs to properly manage and remove these spoilers. This is a big deal that can put the African Union on the trust map when it comes to resolution of conflicts on the continent and beyond. In addition, as has been witnessed throughout modern world history, people want to be considered as experts in the implementation of peace deals by presenting themselves as knowledgeable than the rest. One way of doing this is by writing issues before it is time and creating confusions. For instance, writing about disarmament deals before even the talk start is not more than flexing one's ideological muscles than farsightedness. This was our news analysis for the day and thank you very much for staying.